in studio, David Seymour, ACT Party leader, and Casey Costello from Hobson's Pledge. Plus, we have Tina Ngata, Indigenous rights advocate, and Shane Thepo, who's publicly opposed colonial statues. Thank you all for being here this morning. I heard a lot of sharp intakes of breath through our track from Hikurangi Jackson from the side in particular mm. this morning, clearly raising some ire. Tina, um, you know, we're talking about institution, in, institutionalised, I should say, racism in councils. For you, it's an absolute reality. Oh, it's an absolute reality in every single council in Aotearoa we deal with institutional racism. The question is not, is it there, because it's right throughout Aotearoa. We have a racist past. All New Zealanders are socialised to be racist. The question is only, when are we going to stand up and start talking about it? And Shane, for you, the, mm. um, the statues that we're talking about this morning, in particular Cook and yes. Hamilton, are, are representative of that racist uh, That's right. I, I, took a, I took a bit of a moderate view in terms of Marmaduke. I thought that we would have a good court at all. The reality is the, the council have let us down. They haven't. Mayor Goff has not enacted what he said he has. I haven't been invited to one discussion with him. Uh, so we've got the Matua in Hamilton taking more direct action, and I applaud him. You know, he, Hamilton was a murderous th thug. That wasn't a, a that was not a war. That was a genocide cast upon our people. That has a reality today. And I also want to call out Mullet. He used, I think, an overt racist term. That is the return to the jungle. We are not jungle bunnies. We are citizens of Aotearoa. We are Tangata Whenua, and we have a right to have our say, and to to claim our history back. And we're doing it. And it's exactly that kind of institutional racism that precludes us being able to have the discussion in council, which is why we need to be taking actions like that, which I applaud. The, what they've done to those statues is actually a bicultural conversation from us being able to express it in a way that those councils will not allow. Is it a bicultural conversation for you, Casey, or, or vandalism, what happened to those statues? I'm a former police officer. There is one law in New Zealand, and I swore an oath to uphold New Zealand law, and damage is damage. If there is a conversation to be had, why haven't Tainui tried to have that conversation before it reverted to intentional damage? Well, there may be uh, some clarity from this side about uh, where Tainui has sat in this conversation. Do we know if Tainui has been consulted? Well, first of all, there is not one law for all in Aotearoa. We have an Indigenous right. We claim that Indigenous right as a treaty partner. Um, sometimes I believe that um, action is needed. Uh, we've entered into dialogue for 200 years. You know, to, for the for the councillor to say that Kiri Kiri Ro is only a small part of the history, again, is a suppression of our history, a suppression of um, the people of Tainui, um, and and we're sick and tired of it. And 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 we will take action to to um, confirm our right under the treaty as Tangata Whenua. So what should the response be to Māori um, uh, taking an acts like this against statues that they uh, take exception to, David? What oh, should the response well, be? Well, look, I think you've got to uphold the law. Um, the question is, how do we go forward? And is it going to be um, anarchy and people taking the law into their own hands? That's actually a type of society that's worse for everybody. And I'll just say that Shane, who said that, you know, that an overt racist uh, remark we go back to the jungle without the rule of law. Uh, all he's saying, Shane, is that if we don't have the rule of law, then like most of human history, not just Māori, all over the world, uh, we end up with much worse outcomes. You understand and it's an inflammatory uh, phrase. No it's, not a, no, it's not at all. Because if you can't make basic observations about tens of thousands of years of human history, that the rule of law is really important for people's outcomes and their welfare, uh, without somebody getting precious about it, when that wasn't the intention at all, then we're never going to have a better conversation. Yeah, let's have precious. a talk about the rule of law. The rule of law in Aotearoa sees Māori 11 times more likely to be uh, mm. remanded in custody mm. than non-Māori and mm. seven times more likely for us to be sentenced to prison yep. than non-Māori. There are massive inequalities which yep. evidently are not down to genetic inferiority. We're not genetically mm. inferior, which means that the system... Yeah, I don't, I don't think that anyone's the saying that... Anyone so if the system is at yeah. fault and we have racism in there, then we have an obligation to explore what those issues are. That's what those comments are doing. Mm. That's what those actions against those statues are saying. Well, I think you're having the right conversation now. Why is it that in just about every social statistic, there's a ratio of two to three, whether it's uh, you know welfare receipt, whether it's imprisonment, uh, whether it's educational attainment, mm. whether it's home ownership, Māori are worse off than mm. just about all of that. Mm. Uh, I've spent a lot of my political capital uh, trying to reform education to change that through charter schools, unfortunately. 
unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, that's gone out of flavour with the current government. Mm -hmm. Those are the conversations that we need to have. Uh, but I don't think the answer is for people to start going around uh, and hitting statues they don't like with a hammer. I mean, is there is there a well, statue? How else are they going to get listened to, David? The institutional well, <laughs> racism within the system precludes their voices otherwise. Well, but I don't think that's true at all. I mean, we have had massive the statistics. We have prove it. we have yeah. had massive political debate over the last 30 but, years about what to do about Maori statistics. And yet, the statistics bear out a quite a bit of sustained racism. But David, okay. let's also let's also frame it in terms of the message it sends young Maori that are largely disenfranchised yeah. from society as well, a whole. Go and hit you, a statue you, with a hammer. You, no, no, you have a ha you have a statue named after a murderous thug. I'm sure even you would agree with that. You have a, the main street of Hamilton uh, named after the invader of Parihaka. You know, this is only two, three generations so away from the reality about, of happened. If you're talking about the message you're sending young people, you're sending a message that endorses criminal activity in order to get your point across. Well, the current that's message not that's being sent out again, uh, to young people is that it's OK to oppress and suppress Māori yeah. aspirations and Māori rights. Let's have a look at the amount of landscape, yeah. Māori landscape, that has been altered by the Crown without asking us for our permission. Look at, let's look at Te Tukai yeah. Paio, which let's, was blasted yeah. out of the water without Let's talk permission. about the messages that we want to See, what about this notion of renaming Hamilton Kirikiridoa or Kirikiridoa Hamilton, Casey? Well, if there's a consultation process and people get to say what they want to say, that's what a dem democracy does, yeah. provides the opportunity to have the conversation. That's a good point. So I think one of the problems with, with this was the sense that there was a lack of consultation that yeah. led to this problem. So if you talk about institutional racism within Auckland Council, for example, I do business with Auckland Council. In order to even procure to Auckland Council, you have to demonstrate your commitment to the Te Waitangi. You have to show your commitment as a business. You have to engage with Council as a supplier, right. and as a, a Māori business. That that didn't happen. But, but this is what's required Hamilton. under Council. If you talk well, what, about institutional well, racism, that's, that, can, what, that exists in all councils. Yeah. What actually happened in Hamilton is Andrew King, the mayor, came out one day and said, I've got this idea, hadn't told anyone. Mm. Uh, and it, it was just a disastrous way, uh, politically, to make an announcement. He but hadn't even talked to with, anyone with else the on Hamilton the council. statue as well, that the consultation wasn't there, that uh, local iwi felt that they were not consulted mm. on the placement of, of that statue. Yeah. Should so that's so that well arguably they should have been but here's the question is that the standard now if we don't like the consultation we go and vandalize it that's what Gary Mallett is getting at um, and that's what I think we need to all uphold is the idea that we have a civil conversation what's what's the what do we do going forward do we uh, look to do what America is doing which is removing the statues that people find offensive or is it to erect new ones that that provide some sort of balance yes I think we should I I, I think that if the if the mayor of Auckland, Phil Goff, is true in terms of recognising Tonga Te I think we should have, for instance, a statute or something that really recognises the resist the, the the people who fought a resistance on behalf of not only their tribe but I think the people of Aotearoa, um, the people of Bastion Point. I think they deserve something. I think Fina Cooper deserves something. Yep. When we when we celebrate only our colonialist past, we suppress. Our history. Look, Shane, Shane beat me to it. Well, I was going. To, I wanted to. I was, I was saving this up. Why is there no statue of Fina Cooper, for example? Um, you know, there absolutely should be. Is is there a statue of Nata anywhere? He's on the fifty dollar oh. note. I don't mm. think there is. The, the, the right thing to do is not to erase history, because otherwise we're going to have to start saying, oh, Kate Shepherd was a bad woman because she was transphobic. You know, that's, that's, the re that's, where you get, no, that's where you get to if you start trying to deny the past. We shouldn't try and vandalise what happened. We, do. we should acknowledge it and add to it. We do, a, sadly, we do have to leave it there. Mm. Um, but, but thank you all. Um, if you have any thoughts, please do message us on at Marae.